seats and settle back and prepare for this morning's encouragement. It is by our spiritual leader who whispered to me that he's echoing the first words of God found in Genesis. His topic this morning, let there be light. We will hear what Reverend John has to tell us. Reverend John, over to you, sir. Good morning, spiritual family worldwide. Here in the sanctuary at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica, and all across the globe, wherever you are, welcome to our hearts, welcome to this this moment of sharing. And we just bless the distance between us this morning. There is no social distance for we in this teaching. There is physical distance. And we bless that distance. And in blessing it, it truly becomes sacred space, pulling us close together so that our hearts and our consciousness and our very souls respond as was one to this beautiful to this teaching, teaching known as, known as the science of mind. My friends, My friends 20, 20, 20 was a year, was a year of unimaginable changes. changes. A, year a year in which our routines were disrupted. A year in which we have had to learn new ways of being and to call upon our creativity, our ingenuity, and our resilience in order to cope with what is being called the new norm. And along with the entire world, we are facing still more sweeping changes in 2021. So friends, the winds of change are blowing strongly all across the globe. We awaken each day to a life that is constantly changing, don't we? A friend of mine who lives in the USA called in a dither to share her apprehension about what is happening there and to ask me for a scripture to strengthen her during what she terms these dark times, unquote. Coincidentally, or rather synchronistically, I had been reading a chapter titled Out of Darkness, Light, in Joel Goldsmith's book, the Heart of Mysticism, from which I have been quoting on Monday mornings for my quiet moments in the garden. And so that chapter, Out of Darkness Light, gave me the words for this morning's encouragement and the words to give her that she asked for strengthening her in what she calls these dark times. For the epigraph of that chapter reads, and I quote, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. And there was light. And so I told my friend simply to affirm, let there be light. Can we affirm that together? Let there be light. Affirm it in a half voice. Let there be light. In a whisper. Let there be light. And affirm it in your heart. And so this morning... I want to share with you three eternal truths to help us through dark times. The first eternal truth, my friends, is this. We have been gifted by our creator with the gift and it's the power of choice. This great gift, I don't think we think about it much, but this great gift of choice really is a powerful tool. And you know, the truth is, 
you cannot not choose. If you even say, I'm not going to choose, that's a choice. And therefore, we need to think about how we use that power of choice. Because we can choose to get sucked into the world and what it is experiencing and how it is seeing things. Or we can choose how we want to feel, how we will react, and what we will think when faced with the apparent darkness that is upon the face of the earth. So just remember that the truth is you have the power to choose. You know, I, I once heard a joke about two monks who had taken a, a vow of silence and they were walking in the monastery garden one, one evening and one of them was overcome by the most beautiful sunset he had ever seen. And so he gasped out loud to his friend, Oh, Brother John, what a magnificent sight. And there followed a conversation between them about the glory of God and it's how it shows up in wonderful ways in nature. Unfortunately, the abbot overheard them and summoned them to his office to reprimand them for breaking their vow. And as penance, the abbot gave them each a handful of split peas and instructed them to put them in their shoes and to wear them for the next 24 hours. So, you know, you know if you've even had one grain of sand in your shoe, you know how uncomfortable that is. So, it was a pretty severe punishment. Well, next morning, one of them, one of the pair, hobbling along to breakfast in agony, sees his friend, his partner in crime, tripping the light fantastic down the, the corridors of the, of the monastery. And he, he's just incredulous. He can't believe this. How, how can this man be dancing with split peas in his soup? And so, overcome with curiosity, he, he, <laughs> he, he whispers, his shoe, his shoe, not his soup. I, I had split pea soup, you know, shoe. It should be in the soup, not in the shoe. Overcome with curiosity, he broke his vow for a second time. He said, my God, you didn't keep, you didn't take the abbot's punishment. You didn't put the split peas in your shoe. And the other fellow said, yes, I did. He said, then how in the name of God are you skipping and dancing and humming? Don't worry about the thing, for every little thing's gonna be all right. And his friend said, Everything gonna be all right. You see, I boil my peas. <laughs> so my friends, boil your peas. In fact, if it's going into soup, pressure them. <laughs> Based on that story, here is the second eternal truth I want you to contemplate when darkness moves upon the face of your deepest thoughts and the earth of your experience seems without form and void this year. Remember this. You are part of the divine creative process. You know, it, in my ministry at the uh, Adult Correctional Center in downtown Kingston, I often think if those people in their had used their creativity, their God-given creativity and their ingenuity in a different kind of way, they would have had a different kind of experience. And so I want us to remember that we are part of the creative process. The same process of creation that God used. And so do Joel Goldsmith puts it like this, and I quote, In times such as these, which are like unto the darkness or void upon the face of the earth, wait for God himself within you to say, what? 
let there be light. In the silence and quietness, let this light envelop you, let it enfold you, illumining your life. Let its inner radiance shining without light not only your way, but the way of all with whom you come into contact with all who touch your consciousness. And my friends, I want you to remember that your consciousness is a powerful thing because what you believe will govern who you are and how you are and the choices you are going to make as you use your God-given creativity to create a world. And hopefully, we have taken a decision to make the choices that we need to make to help create a world that works for all. Not just for a few, but for all. In our Thursday class, uh, we're studying Emmett Fox's mental equivalence. And there's an, a lovely little exercise that I want to share with you that we got in that class. And it is called STOP. S-T-O-P. It's an acronym. The S stands for STOP. So when you find yourself faced with the darkness or apparent shadows seem to be closing in on you, stop. Just stop what you're doing for a moment. And the T stands for take a deep breath. Just breathe in deeply in Jamaica, we say from your belly bottom. Deep, breathe deeply, way down. You know, in Jamaica, it's, I think we're the only people in the world that talk about foot bottom, hand middle, neck back. We, you know, it's for emphasis. Well, take a deep breath into your belly bottom. O, observe what you are thinking and how you are feeling in the moment. Because that's a clue, you know, to, to the choice you're going to make. So stop, take a deep breath, observe what you are thinking and feeling in the moment. And the P stands for proclaim the truth. And that truth is God is light. So just proclaim in that moment, let there be light. Can we say that together again? Let there be light. And having proclaimed it, the P also stands with proceed with the rest of what you were doing. Now, I want to recommend that you, you do that several times a day. In the class, it, it, the recommendation is that we set our, we set our, our alarms on our devices every few hours just to remind us to stop. Take a deep breath. Observe what you are thinking and proclaim, let there be light. Here's an affirmation for you. I participate in the divine creative process. Can we say that? I participate in the divine creative process and all my experiences are joyous and light-filled. All my experiences are joyous and light-filled. The third eternal verity that I would like you to contemplate as you navigate the uncharted waters of 2021 is this. It's a simple one. We say it all the time, but I want you to really think about its meaning. God is all there is. Listen to me. There is nothing that can be opposed to God. God is all there is. So when you hear people talking about the enemy and Satan and evil, just affirm to yourself, God is all there is. Recognizing this unity allows us to see beyond any barriers to its perfect expression between the peoples of the world. You know the Jamaican motto, out of many one people really should be a world motto because it is so true, we are one. And I think of Jamaican national hero, Marcus Messiah Garvey, and he said, up ye mighty race. And I want you to know that Garvey was not singling out the people of color, the people of African origin as the mighty race. 
He was talking about the human race. Up, ye human race. Embrace your spiritual magnificence. Join hands and walk through eternity together because we are here in perpetuity. This is it. This is the heaven that we seek and we are here to create it regardless of color, race, creed, political belief, sexual orientation, gender. We are one. For God is all there is. And you are part of that wholeness, part of that allness, part of that goodness, part of that power. And that's why God in its perfection and its love and its beauty gave us the power to choose. To remind ourselves that we are co-creators with this awesome presence and power. And we can choose how we use it. In a world that longs to be united. In a world that deserves to live in beauty and in harmony and in truth. So a simple way, my friends, to grasp our oneness is to see that we are to God as fingers are to your hand. Each finger and your thumb is unique in size and purpose. And yet they are all made of the same substance. While separated from each other in form, they are animated by the same source of energy, aren't they? They are moved by the same intelligence and fed by the same heart. And since we are all never separated from the love and wisdom of the divine, we can always rely on its inflow of inspiration, guidance, and support in every area of our lives. And every finger is important for the whole body, isn't it? You only have to have a hangnail or a little nick on one finger that's painful and you suddenly realize how much it's used and how important it is to do the simplest tasks in your life. So I have an assignment for you this week. And it's to do with the hands, that image of the hands. Every day, this week, as you wash your hands, and I know you're doing that many times a day, very frequently, I want you to visualize your heart beating and your mind engaging. And as you as wash you your wash hands, hands, I want I you want to, want say, to say, I bathe myself, myself in the eternal, eternal truth, truth that God, God is all there is. There is. You wash, you your, wash hands your hands and say, I, I bathe myself. When you're showering or, or bathing too, say, I bathe myself in the eternal truth that God is all there is. You see, my friends, this is the God of inclusivity. No one is excluded. Each particle, each element, each infinitesimal bit of the great diversity of the universe are all parts of the body of God. And when you truly understand this, you begin to know that there is only good and there can be no evil power. So you say, Sir Reverend John, where does evil come from then? I'll tell you. It comes from someone or something that is out of alignment with the good of God. Evil comes from someone or something that is out of alignment with the good that is God. And my friends, when enough of us are able to see the inherent wholeness of the universe, we will create a synergy. There will be a tipping point that just moves the entire creation from mankind to Godkind, so that all of humanity awakens to the truth that we are one. One God, one mind, one infinite intelligence, one presence, one power. And there is nothing, nothing opposed to God. You know, throughout the ages, my friends, all the great mystics have understood this truth. The truth of our common union, our communion with God. St. Paul encouraged the early Christians, quote, to let the mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Unquote. This mind is what we know as Christ consciousness. 
the consciousness that we are all the sons and daughters of the infinite invisible. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching known as the science of mind, writes in the textbook of the same name on page 364, paragraph 3, and I quote, we should never hesitate to say that we know the truth, because we do. For the realization of the unity of God and man is the truth. We simply need a greater realization of this. How are we to get it? Only by penetrating deeper and yet deeper into our own divine nature. Pushing further and further back into the infinite. Where are we to do this? There is no place except within that we can do it. What, who is to do it for us? No one. No one can. The evolution of the individual, Holmes acclaims, the unfoldment of personality, the enlightenment of the soul, the illumination of the spirit can come only to the degree that the individual himself or herself purposes to let life operate through him or her. And then Holmes quotes Philippians 2 verse 5, which is that quotation I just gave you from Paul. Let the mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, unquote. That this mind is the mind of God, the only mind, the supreme intelligence of the entire universe. And it is your mind and my mind and the mind of every single person on the earth. Holmes further states, and I quote, the answer to every question is within you because you are within spirit and spirit is an indivisible, indivisible whole. The solution to every problem is within you. The healing of disease is within you. The forgiveness of all sin is within you. You see, you have choice. The raising of the dead, those dead to the truth of their, their being and their, and their godness and their goodness, that raising of the dead is within you. Heaven is within you. This is why Jesus prayed to the indwelling I am and said, Our Father, which art in heaven. Can we say that beautiful prayer together and really think about the meaning? Together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Thou lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so it is. Can we say, for thine, mine, and ours is the kingdom. Together. For thine, mine, and ours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, each of us represents the whole. The kingdom, the power, and the glory is truly ours. So we must not look afar off to see the Christ, for it is near at hand. It is always within you. If we take time to be still, we too can hear that still small voice proclaiming, this is my beloved son or daughter. It is always there. Call it conscience, call it intuition, call it what you will. It is there. None of us need to go unguided through the new year, for we are all divine at the center, and we are all images of the most high, the most beautiful, the most joyous, the most exquisite experience we could have the experience of God. Goldsmiths puts it in these reassuring words, and I quote, the light shines, 
The light shines within you now. It moves in and out of your very soul, your consciousness, your mind, your spirit, your being, and your body. There was a moment when there was only darkness, when you were a human being in spiritual darkness, a void, an emptiness, a barrenness, an incompleteness. Then out of the nothingness of the infinite invisible, upon the face of the darkness, upon the face of that void, the spirit moves. It penetrates the denseness of human consciousness and ignorance and takes form. Let there be light. And there was light. Just think about that. In fact, in the original, it is translated as, let light be. Let light be all around us in this time, on this journey known as 2021. Let that light illumine every nation of this earth. Let that light fill our country, Jamaica. Let that light fill the USA and Canada. Let that light fill Europe and Asia and Africa and all the places of the earth so that there are no dark spaces in human consciousness. From east to west, from north to south, above, below, and within the consciousness of humankind, let light be. And oh my God, as we proclaim it, there is light. Let there be prosperity, and there is prosperity. Let there be love, and there is love. Let there be understanding and compassion and beauty, and there is understanding and compassion and beauty. Let there be joy, and every heart smiles in response, for there is joy. Let God be established in every heart and every consciousness. And behold, that light in its glorious incandescence fills our consciousness, fills the earth, fills the entire cosmos as the waters fill the sea. And so let me, in conclusion, just reiterate the three eternal verities which I want you to embody this year. One, what we choose is reflected in our lives. We have the gift of choice. Choose God, my friends. Two, you are part of the divine creative process. You too can say, let there be, and it will be. And three, God's infinite inclusivity embraces everything and everyone, even seeming opposites. And so it is in recognition of these words and these truths that we find ourselves in union with the infinite. We will navigate 2021 secure in the understanding that life is good because God is good. Let us know together that humankind is moving into deeper peace, deeper joy, deeper prosperity, deeper inclusivity, beauty, forgiveness, compassion, and godly love. Let us surrender ourselves to God, surrender every day afresh our possessions, our health, our understanding. Then out of the darkness and void within us, the Spirit of God moves, and there is light. The light that lighteth every man, woman, and child upon the face of this planet at this time. And when the earth seems to be without form and void, the earth of your human experience, and darkness appears to be upon the face of the deep. Stop, my friends. Take a deep breath. Observe what you are thinking and feeling and proclaim. Let there be light. Namaste.